All right, in this video, we're going to do another example of deciding if a set of vectors, um, a collection of vectors, is linearly independent or dependent. And if you watched part A and you saw that this was dependent, I think I told you that part B was independent. But let's, again, just maybe go through the steps just to uh, verify that and make sure. So again, we've got three vectors, uh, the vector with components 1, 2, 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 4. Again, we're thinking about this system of equations. Uh, you know, normally I would not even write this step out, but just to emphasize. So we're thinking about this, uh, this equation where we multiply each vector by some real number, scalars. And we're trying to determine the solutions to this, to this equation. We want to know if this has solutions only, and notice they always have a solution if we make all of the, uh, all of the scalars equal to zero, well then it's going to force everything to equal zero. So we know that we always have that solution, again the trivial solution, um, but we're trying to decide if we have non-trivial solutions or not. So I'm going to write my matrix 1, 2, 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 7, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. So a little more tedious, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So I'm going to do negative 2 times the first row and add that to the second row to get my new second row. Again, this is the type of stuff that uh, very, very useful to have a calculator for. But again, you may have to do it by hand in class, so let's, let's uh, do it this way. So negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 2 plus 0 is negative 4. And then uh, we'll just get 0, always zeros in the last. Um, we can do negative 1 times row 1, add that to row 3 to get my new row 3. So we'll get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. 0 plus 1, which is 1. Uh, we'll get negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. And again, a 0. Then I think we can do negative 4 times row 1 to get my new row 4. So negative 4 times row, row 1 plus row 4 to get our new row 4. So negative 4 plus 4 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Um, let's see, we'll get uh, negative 8 plus 7, again, which is negative 1, and then some zeros. Notice immediately uh, we can do, for example, negative 1 times row 3 and add that to row 4 to get my new row 4. I'm basically noticing that they're exactly the same. So if I just multiply one of those by negative 1 and add it to the other, we can simply make that row into a bunch of zeros. Okay, so if we do that, that's going to make the last row into zeros. Now, you might think just because we have this row of zeros, again, we have uh, non-trivial, or excuse me, we only have, uh, or excuse me, we have non-trivial solutions. But let's keep going just to make sure here, because in fact, that's, that's not correct. Um, so let's see here. So we've got our, our one and our, our uh, second row, second column. That's good. So we can do negative uh, one times row two and add that to row three to get my new row three. So I'm going to leave the first row alone, one, zero, two, zero. I'm going to leave the second row alone as, as well. So let's see, if we multiply it by negative 1, we'll just get 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We'll get, um, let's see, I guess uh, positive 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we still have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We can take our, um, our third row and just divide that by 3 to make uh, that third row, third column, into a 1. So 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We're having fun. Um, and notice now what's going to happen is uh, we can basically just zero out uh, the rest of the entries in the, the third column. So if we do 4, uh, well, I guess let's do negative 2 times row 3 and add that to row 1 to get our new row 1. And then we'll do 4 times row 3, add that to row 2 to get our new row 2. So again, the bottom row, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, the third row we're leaving alone. 
If we take uh, negative 2 times the third row, we'll be left with 1, 0. We'll have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Again, 0. Um, we've got, if we do 4 times row 3 and add that to row 2, we'll get 0, 1. And then that'll make that into a 0 and a 0. So now this tells us, um, you know, again, these were the values of our scalars, a1, a2, a3. The first row says, well, a1 has to equal 0. It says a2 has to equal 0. And the third row tells us that a3 also has to equal 0 for that original um, equation to be satisfied. So it says the only way this original equation is satisfied is if a1, a2, a3 um, all equal 0. That tells us that we have only the trivial solution. And again, by definition, if it's only true when all the scalars equal 0, that tells us that we have a linearly independent, a linearly independent set of vectors. So this is why it's still, you know, you want to make sure, uh, there, there are definitely some observations and shortcuts you can make, but for now, again, let's just brute force check them all, make sure, do the complete row reduction, and uh, make sure whether or not we have trivial solutions or not. So, uh, so one example of a linearly dependent set we saw in part A, and in this one, it's going to be linearly independent. Again, we'll tie these notions together of a span and linearly uh, dependence, and we'll, we'll tie those together to form the important notion of what's called a basis for a set of vectors.